Downbeat earnings led the market lower yesterday, with the Dow falling over 200 points. Global growth questions remain a concern, though markets got a bit of a boost from a positive Chinese PMI reading overnight. Today, investors prepare for another busy earnings day. I'm Nicole Erkin, and The Morning Call starts right now. Good morning. I'm Scott Redley, Chief Strategic Officer of T3Live.com. And I'm Nicole Erkin with The Street, and together we bring you The Morning Call. Now, Scott, yesterday we got the second over 200-point loss in less than a week. A little bit, (laughs) you know, a little bit of a nerve call for investors, whatever you want to call it. A little stomach turning. Something. Yeah. So, you know, as we continue to digest earnings this week, a slew of more reports today, tomorrow, uh, you know, we continue to question, will this move continue to continue down or will, are there opportunities, are there entry points to come in? So after the move down, what are you looking at right here today? Fresh start or (laughs) or more, more pain ahead? Well, there's, there's always opportunity. It all depends on your time frame. Yeah. And, and it's been adding up. We tried to discount the market ahead of the third quarter earnings, but as they've been rolling in, the right. revenues continue to be a problem. You can't hide revenues, and they've been softer. A lot of the guidance which people wanted to see has, you know, it's also been soft. But a lot of these um, type of scenarios or a lot of the clues that we were starting to get a little weaker were adding up last week. And if you recall, you know, uh, almost two weeks ago, that Jobs Friday when they tried to say 7.8% unemployment, that was sold. Then you also had last week, you had IBM come out, break its 100-day, break the 200-day. Intel was weak. Other earnings were starting to add up. Apple was pressured. You know, and then, you know, uh, that halts. That Thursday, you could have sold almost 14.55 in the S&P or 14.44 on Friday. So it's always bad if you're the last man out or if you're selling into, you know, some type of fearful day like we had yesterday. You don't want to be selling on Dow down 240 points. You want to sell prior and hopefully maybe even position yourself for an oversold bounce and the futures are up like five, six handles. So maybe we get some type of bounce today. Right. You know, and as you've mentioned and talked about, this pullback is still pretty meager relative to the strength that we've seen this year. So, you know, as we see a little bit of weakness in the market, is this an opportunity to come in? And are there individual stock opportunities? From, but again, you know, from a market perspective, what levels would you be interested in coming back in here? Well, I think in the S&P, we're kind of in no man's land, where we broke below the 50-day, but we're above the 100 and the 200-day. So mm-hmm. if we take a look at the chart of the, of the spiders, you will see, remember I was talking to you about the day of the unemployment came out, and everyone got all excited, went to the highs, and sold off. That's what gave us this move all the way down to the, you know, the, the 50-day in the S&P. But then we had that rally back up. You know, right here looked decent. It looked as if maybe there's a chance with the home builders strong and the financials strong to continue higher. But then it didn't happen. Then more earnings started to come in and more disappointments. That's when we broke this upper level. So here was a way out. When on Friday when we broke 14.45, that was a way out. And then you know, yesterday we finally broke this trend that we've been in in check with since the June 4th low. So whenever that happens, you have to be a little bit careful. You know, you have the 100 day, which I was just talking about coming in here at 1393. Here's a 200 day. You know, we are bouncing today. I do not think yesterday's low is the low of this corrective process. You know, if we do get some kind of bounce back that continues today, I think traders are going to try and sell 1425 to maybe even 1433. This will be your resistance. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, like you mentioned, there weren't very high expectations for earnings coming into the quarter, but we have seen some really high quality companies disappoint, like DuPont, like IBM, things that have, have rattled investors a little bit. So, you know, coming, coming in now, at least on the, from the S&P perspective, people are a little bit confused. Well, and, uh, the other index, though, that has sold off even more is tech. You know, yes. the Qs have been a little bit more weak. So what does that say for the, lar- for the broader market? And is well, tech really important to key in on here? Tech's very important. Yeah. And, you know, before the actual correction, we were like, what's wrong with technology? Technology, right. it's healthy when it leads us higher. You know, when the Russell makes new highs ahead of the S&P and the Dow, that's healthy because typically in technology and in the Russell you have that's where people are excited about growth so technology started to break down before the the S&P and if you look here if you guys remember you know we started talking about um, the 50-day moving average and you know it broke well before the S&P look at this day right here this day was actually October 9th this is the day when we broke support and this was a day when you could have sold okay and then if you miss this day we came back and retested look how symmetrical that was broke down, 
retested, and then continued lower. So here we are, you know, right around the 100 day, above the 200 day. You know, it's been a nice size correction. So I think, you know, we might try and try a bounce here. You know, this time we want to see if this, um, what could be now resistance gets rejected. So I would say for the Qs, right down like 67.26. You know, to me, I always say what's the easy type of bounce and the easy type of bounce would be to this area. And then if the bears want to have lower prices, they probably don't let the Qs get back above 67. So here's the playground for the bulls. Here's the line of the sand for the bears. And this is the point of reference at the lows for now. Yeah, so indices might need a little time to repair their charts before some traders come in. But, you know, there, there are a lot of broken, tar broken charts, but you know, there are opportunities that remain. And, you know, on Mad Money, we always look at individual names as opportunities. And the name that brought the averages down largely yesterday was DuPont, which fell 9% and was a surprising miss. You know, DuPont has been a very steady company. Uh, it's really transitioned to agriculture and nutrition, which are very strong long-term secular markets. But one of the big disappointments was its commodity business, TIO2. Uh, pricing has come off a little bit. That's been a tailwind for it in the past. But you know, after a 9% sell-off, this could be an opportunity from an investment perspective. Yes. As, for a trader, does the chart look a little bit risky right here? I, what I like to see is when you, when you know something's priced in is you come out with a re report like you saw yesterday. And mm -hmm. if it was priced in already, typically right. you open down and you retrace part of it or maybe even go green. You don't even have to fill the gap, but just go green. And yesterday, if you look at the chart of DD, it didn't happen. So I'm not sure if it's exactly ready yet, but as an investor, you don't have to be as precise as a trader, but you go to the chart and let me show you what I'm talking about. Here it is. You know, really there wasn't that many, the, the expectations were not high here. It wasn't like DuPont was trading at 52 or trading near 52 week highs. It was actually below the moving averages. So it was pretty much in line or somewhat weaker before. And then pow, here's your gap down. So we talk about huge gaps. If over the next, just say three to four sessions, it goes sideways and doesn't fill this gap and people don't come in and say, oh, I could buy this today at 45 versus where it was pre-earnings of 49, that shows you that the demand is still not there yet. So what you do is you write down yesterday's low, that is about 40, what is this? This is 45.09. We trade through this, you could see a, a bit lower prices down you know, to another point of reference. I do think you could wait a little bit, at least you know, see some digestion over three, four days to see if this level could stick. If it doesn't, trades through here, I think you could be buying this a little bit closer to 43. If it goes right into the gap today and fills it in the next few sessions, you know that it was more priced in than not. So I think let the stock tell us you know, whether or not there's more downside or not. So some really important levels from a trading perspective, some things to keep in mind in terms of where you want to come in. You know, from an investment perspective, just keep in mind, DuPont has some nice yield support, a strong dividend. Again, like I mentioned, the agriculture, nutrition trends, very strong company. We've seen this company bounce back before. 9% sell-off seems a bit overdone, so you might see some a little bit more downside ahead, but from a longer term perspective, it's an interesting time to come in. Very strong company right here. Yes, you just, you know what, you don't have to be all in. You right. know, do a feeler now when it starts acting better, you add, so you buy some in the hole, and then when it starts trading better, you add to it. That's why we have a tier system. We never go all in or all out, it doesn't make sense. Exactly, and Jim Cramer and Stephanie Link for the Charitable Trust always talk about buying in increments as well. And, you know, Jim Cramer was talking yesterday, Alan Coleman really should have come out and pre-announced. This was a surprise. <laughs> I think that's one of the reasons the stock sold off so big, because it has been such a steady company. Yes. So, you know, if we switch to another company that's been an area of strength, also in the chemical space, we look at PPG. And again, one of the reasons we're focusing on chemicals is because it's a very important read on what's happening globally in the global economy. And this is, again, we're continuing to try to get more reads. PPG, though, is an interesting case because it's been transitioning to a specialty company and away from commodities. So it actually has a lot of tailwinds just because it's been positioning itself well and has seen strength in auto and arrow um, and it's more specialty oriented right. segments. And so, you know, it's had a big run, though. So is it too late or will this momentum continue? See, I look at this chart and this chart tells me there's more support. It's yeah. still trending. It hasn't broken trends. It's still above moving averages. So people are buying it on the dip. And mm -hmm. I don't think it's too late. You know, this one, I like it a lot better. I like it also that earnings are actually out of the way. So you're not going to get that curveball. So, you know, you saw a little bit of corrective activity. It is below the 8 and the 21 days. So I don't think you need to be in a rush to buy it. But, you know, it's holding this trend, a trend that's been in place for, for quite some time. It's above the 50. Actually, you know, what is this moving average right here? This is the, yeah, it's above 
the 100 day, which a lot of things have come down to, and it's above the trend line. So I would say this one uh, is showing much more relative strength and it looks like it's much more diverse. So if you're not committed to it, here's your stop. 113, I think as long as it holds 113, it's gonna make it very easy to stay along it. And then over some time, it works its way higher and continues to trend. But this one actually looks like, you know, the chart's still intact. So DuPont sell-off might be an interesting entry point. PPG continued strength. The CEO Chuck Bunch was on Mad Money yesterday, continued to reiterate his positive outlook. Again, 90% of the business now specialty after the GGC transaction. So two names to keep in mind. And also another recent um, earnings piece, Selenies, had a disappointing quarter. This is an interesting one because it actually didn't really sell off. It's kind of what we've seen from some other names where expectations have been priced in a little bit and we have some tailwinds going forward. Another specialty oriented name. So how does the chart look to you? Well, I like the fact when it comes out with earnings and it's supposedly disappointing and right. it tries to go green. And this right. is different than DuPont. And if you look here at the chart, you'll see yesterday, you know, pretty wide range bar here, you know, where it, you know, it engulfed the action. So, you know, granted, is it, is it a look, does it look good to me from a chart standpoint? No, but at least, uh, you know, damage might be contained. So at this particular point, if you're an investor here, you know, you could probably stay with it. Here is the low to trade against. Here's your 3496. You know, it's in a range. So for my traders, they're probably not even going to really care about it too much. It's still below the 200 day. It has some work to do, but this, you know, seems like it's in the game. It seems like it took its earnings in stride. And if this group starts to get a little bit better or the economy starts to get little whispers that, you know, it's getting better versus worse, this could be something to the upside for an investor. Just, you know, as a trade, it doesn't really look that uh, interesting. Yeah, so three important specialty chemicals names to keep in mind, Dow, PPG, Selenies. We got, we got Dow overnight, uh, Dow the stock, not yeah. the index. Um, that's more of a commodity player. Um, and in the chemical space, you know, keep, keep track of the commodity names as well. But on Mad Money, we've really preferred the specialty names because they have a little more control over their destiny. They're less immune, they're, they're more immune to kind of the global moves and commodities and that sort of thing. And, you know, think, speaking of global trends, uh, China has been a very big factor in what's moving companies and what's moving uh, the global, the, you know, investor sentiment because it's a very big picture of global health. And overnight we <laughs> got <think>? Chinese, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and obviously also it's been a very important debate topic and political yes. topic and people are wondering what will Romney do, what's his view, has Obama been handling relationship with China well. So political and economic implications all around. But overnight we got Chinese PMI, which came in stronger. That's a positive. People right. are worried, and this this kind of co this comes on top of the positive GDP, positive retail sales, a, a couple of a few things that are, are that are pointing into the positive direction versus the negative, which was happening about a month ago. Right, and certainly this is a very contested camp. So every <laughs> little bit of incremental positive news helps support the bull case. And uh, we, we all got a positive surprise from Peabody, which is the Exxon Mobil of coal. It's the behemoth. And it came out with strong report, had a big gap up. This has been a stock that had caused a lot of pain for investors over the last year or so. So, you know, when you look here, it's had a little bit of a run up on a little bit more positive momentum in coal. We've seen a bounce back in natural gas also, which has helped these coal names. Obviously, coal is very important for China. Right. What do you think? BTU. Well, I, on, the, on the trading floor, some chatter has been that these coal names are acting better because uh -huh. they've been laggards. They've been laggards right. this year. They've been laggards even prior to that. A lot of people believe that, you know, coal is an efficient way to produce energy. I know I've been to China. They use a lot of coal. I tried to go for a jog and I almost coughed up a black <laughs> lung. But anyway, as far as the, the price action here, it does look a little bit more constructive. And if you look at the chart of BTU, it finally, you know, reclaimed the, the 200 day. So it, it's you know, trying to break this multi, multi, multi. I actually did it almost right here, downtrend. You know, um, this was the last time it, it somewhat ignited. And now it's above the eight day, it's above the 21 day. It's showing some accumulation. I think that this is something, you know, if you want to be in a coal name, you know, you could stay with this, especially like you said, earnings are out of the way and it could continue. So BTU looks a little bit better. looks like it could be trending more to the upside and a lot of the pain is, is out of the way. Yeah, you know, and it's, it, it's also managing its costs well. So the company seems to be, again, taking a little bit more of an active role in controlling its destiny. Well, it seems like, you know, the specialty, which is your theme, is yeah. acting better than those that just go with the macro because right. they're in control and they're tweaking their business, which is better. Right. Though, so, you know, that said, BTU and the coal names in general are a little bit more commodity sensitive, and that's important to keep in mind. You know, another alternative to play coal always 
in the back of your head are rails. And Union Pacific is really the best position right here. It has coal exposure, but less than the eastern rails like CSX and NS, uh, NSC, which have been the earnings weren't quite as strong. And you know, UNP is a nice one if you want some exposure to coal, but if you kind of don't want to go all in. Right. So you know, speaking of commodities and and being vulnerable to them. Uh, Freeport McMoran's considered a very uh, big, a name that goes in cycles. You know, in 2008, we saw it be crushed, and it's obviously in a much better position right now. It reported earnings as well. Uh, this is a, a copper name. Right. This is a gold name a little bit. Uh, I think it's about 10% gold, mostly copper. What do you think here about the chart? I think the chart's been broken. A lot of people yeah. haven't focused on it. You know, it did have a bounce off the lows as a laggard play. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's definitely exposed to the economy because what do they say, Dr. Copper? You know, when copper is weak, that means demand around the world is, is, is weak. And if when it's strong, you know, this stock has a little gold in it too. So sometimes it's helpful for it, sometimes it's not. You look at the chart here, you know, I, you know what, what you see here is um, it's, decent. You know, there's nothing really to grab onto here except for it just pulled back and if you don't own it and you want to buy something, you know, here here's a level around 38. This is a nice size gap up right there. This gap up came in on September 7th. It's still above it. It's just very choppy. I do think, you know, there was I, the, a few days ago people were talking about US steel and I mm -hmm. think that this one at least has a, a, a chart that is a little tighter and potentially tradable. So for U.S. steel, if you look at the chart here, you will see that it just had to move off the lows. It's trying to hold the eight in the 21 day. Say as long as you know X, you know, opens or stays above, just say this um, 21 half level. There is a shot that it takes back the 200 day above 23. So overall, this name has been has been annihilated. If you look at it like this, but you know, as a laggard play, it's trying to go sideways here. So above this level. Could be good for guys that haven't been caught in this whole mess, and I just threw it in there so we can go to the next one. Yeah, no, I think these are really <laughs> important points. You know, on Mad Money, we're not really such big fan, fans of Freeport McMoran, but one of the reasons I wanted to bring it up is it's such an important read on China, and it's important to pay attention to its capex trends, its capital expenditures, because uh, Freeport, BHP, Rio, these capex trends are really important um, for names like Caterpillar, which at this point I think is a much better investment right here, as. The, you know, the FCXs of the world are ramping right. up their CapEx going into 2013. This should be a positive tailwind for Caterpillar. And, you know, as we've mentioned, Caterpillar is a really important read on China. About only, I think, only 5% of its sales are to China, but China is about 40% of the commodity demand. And, you know, again, Caterpillar <laughs> mining name. We talked back in September about how Caterpillar had disappointed, had a pre announcement guiding down for 2015, but it reported. A disappointing quarter, right. surprise, surprise, <laughs> and didn't really sell off. So, you know, from a chart perspective, you mentioned this with uh, Selenies. Is this another interesting, out, uh, you know, uh, outcome when when it disappoints but it has a little bit of a bounce? Well, this goes to show you that names that people love or love to invest in sometimes are trades, and mm -hmm. sometimes you could use stops. And if you look at the chart here of Caterpillar, it's been gross, it's been annihilated. You go here, look at the highs here. You know, you had many chances to get out of it. You had a high, lower high, lower high. It broke support here at 100. This is when it broke the 200 day. Look how long ago that was. So down here, perhaps it's time to start to nibble. Okay, it did just come out with earnings. It didn't get crushed. I actually traded it that day. It went from negative to positive and, and made some money there. You know, yesterday it was down a little bit. So I would say short term, if you're risk averse, you know, be a buyer versus this 82 area. This 82 area is pretty big support. If it were to break that, the real line in the sand here comes in at 80 and change. If this market's not going to fall apart, you know, if the market goes down 20%, like some are saying, this is not going to hold 80. If the market's going to hold in there, we test 1380 and stick around there. I think buying it at 80, 82 is much better than at some point. You know, it could take three months, six months, nine months. You're going to see better prices. I wouldn't go all in. But again, if you miss this major downtrend, you miss this major move to the downside, you know what, you have the luxury of testing a little bit here, but then wait for it to start acting better so you could add to it. Right. So certainly a cyclical name, but this is where you get your beta. You know, if you really believe in the U.S. housing turn, construction term, uh, you know, you can play that with Eaton, Warehouse, or Emerson as well. You know, if you think China is stabilizing, Caterpillar is the name to be in. You're not going to make that money in Clorox. So <laughs> yeah, there's downside, but there's upside too. And this is where you'll really see some momentum if you do want to come in, if you believe in these trends. Yeah, and Caterpillar is one down here, I think. Definitely worth a look, especially if you're not sitting in and holding your nose and going on the water like a lot of investors. Right. So, you know, as we're thinking about China, we're always thinking about mining and construction and infrastructure, but we have to add some glitz and glamour because, 
you know, <laughs> I'm a girl and that's what we like to do. So Coach was a glitz and glamour of yesterday, a, a downbeat day, but uh, this one showed some real strength. A, a good quarter, people had kind of given up on it. Me? But <laughs> Someone asked me, should I take it long into earnings? I'm like, yeah. I don't think it's worth the risk, but I'll talk about that after. Yeah, and you know, again, this is the difference between trading and investing. We talked also about the management quotient, Lou Frankfurt yeah. being, you know, when it comes to a free port or a caterpillar, management team can certainly manage the business effectively. But in retail, you're really thinking about merchandising and strategy and having a real vision. And Lou Frankfurt has ha has showed that, uh, you know, has had a really tr strong track record. So if you believe in the management, if you believe in the trends, then, you know, that yeah. retail name is important to come into. So coach, we had couponing doing better um, from the discount perspective. Uh, you know, the, the outlet stores are important for them. We see China still strong. It's so nascent in China that we, it's nascent. not nascent. Look, Harvard grad. <laughs> That's, yeah, there we go. Um, but there's still a lot of upside ahead because it's not, when you're in such an emerging growth stage, you're, it's the, you know, ups and downs of China PMI are not really going to move the needle for you. So, a nut, you know, big so bounce yesterday. And yes, but it also goes to show you how, you know, if you have a thesis that you stick with that you don't really take into earnings, there right. was opportunity afterwards. Mm -hmm. So I want to show you here on the chart how you can enter it without as much risk, you know, if it wasn't, you know, up to par or because the, the chart was telling you that there wasn't that many big expectations there. And if you look here at Coach, look at, you'll see, you know, at least now earnings are out of the way. You have major support here. Major support really is down around 53.60. But if you go look at the five minute chart, I'm going to give you a little active trading course 101 here, Nicole. Take a look there. This was your gap up. Okay, gapped up on the earnings, but it pulled in within the first 30 minutes all the way down to 56. Okay, so right here, when it made your little wedge type pattern, you didn't have to take it into earnings and you could have been a buyer right around 57. Yes, did you miss three bucks? big deal, but you didn't have the risk. Here's your entry. You could be actually even trading it versus gap. And now you're in a position that you like for a recovery in, in China, recovery potentially, I guess, for the high end consumer. And, you know, right now you're in the game. So at this point, you know, coaches in there, if you entered yesterday, good, good job. And I do think, you know, the 200 day will be the next, you know, feather in its uh, bag <laughs> or cap, <laughs> but, you know, it's 61. So we'll see if it could uh, reclaim the, the 200 day. Yeah, you know, for the year, it's actually not really up. So it is an interesting entry point that's positive, you know, Great if you were in, but still an opportunity. So, yes. you know, let's finish with a positive note, some hot stocks of, of late, because we did, we did have a pretty downbeat day yesterday. Facebook, surprise, surprise, a real surprise. You know, this has been a name that many left for dead, and we got some real momentum in after hours action after the quarter. People are talking about mobile, actually having right. some traction uh, for its first kind of full quarter with the strategy underway. So what well, do you think here? A few things. First of all, again, you know, anytime something's left for dead, right. the market tries to punish as many people as possible. And I think the, <laughs> the short interest was above 10%. Right. So, you know, another thing that was important is yesterday I had to go in my mentoring class, but you know, if you didn't take it into the report and you know what it's looking to report, and if the, um, the data is incrementally positive, you could trade it after hours. This stock was below 19 after it reported and then went from down to positive to up almost 10 percent you could have waited till after the report now if you look at the chart where we are now okay on an individual basis you know you'll see that here's some levels of 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 resistance okay and this is where it stopped 22. so if you knew 22 to 23 was resistance you know after hours there were a lot of guys that made nice money there so at this point you know it's gonna have a big gap up I would say in the first 30 minutes, see if it holds the gap. You do have resistance here at about 2240. Then you have another set of resistance here around 2340. And then you have the gap from last quarter's earnings. So at this point, what I would do today with Facebook is give it 30 minutes. They're gonna, mm -hmm. Everyone's going to try and sell it down. And if they can't sell it down in the, in the, in the first 30 minutes, maybe you position versus that low. And then, and then ride it out because the, the news is out of the way. I still know there's a lot, a lot of smart money that bought in the private placement. Yeah. A lot of guys that got positioned um, that had a hold that didn't sell, you know, between 31 and 33. I'm not talking about the guys that chased on the IPO day above 40. I'm not talking about retail. I'm talking about smart institutional money that got sold this deal higher. So it's, you know, these are the, the major underwriters are gonna have to do something to get them back on, on target. And these are the guys that hold the longer term. So 
perhaps they're averaging in. So I do think Facebook doesn't have a 15 on it, like Barron said. You know, I do think it has higher prices, but and you know, today might be the first day to you know continue to ignite that move. Yeah, you know, Mr. Market or Mrs. Market can be very Mrs. Humbling. Market, <laughs> very humbling. Oh, it's so, a man session also. Yes. <laughs> so if you're uh, if you're bearish on a name, you can be taught a lesson after hours, like we saw with Facebook. But you know, like you mentioned, this is an important name to keep watching. Uh, mobile strategy is very important for Facebook, also for Google and Yahoo. Mobile's been the big driver of whether these names are moving up and down. I, uh, Facebook does have a no, another IPO lockup expiration coming in November, which is important to keep in mind because that's been a big driver for the stock. Right. So, you know, and another hot tech name that we can finish up with, of course, Apple. Big day yesterday, iPad announcements, the mini, and then the other yeah. I, device. Uh, people were a little disappointed, but we still have earnings coming up. We want to hear about iPhone 5 potential shortages or maybe an out outperformance that some aren't expecting so well, at this you point think? you know everyone a lot of people were a little upset mm -hmm. th that own Apple that have been holding Apple but if you've been holding Apple for multi years yeah you know you don't have to be worried that it just pulled 13 percent off the highs right and on mad money which I think it was like three weeks ago right. I talked about it from a trading perspective and a trader perspective is different than an investment perspective I was long Apple for you know 60 70 80 points you know primarily the entire time after last quarter and then I said, if we break the 21 day moving average, a moving average that it's been following for almost 30 days, you know, tread lightly. It means that we could have some kind of correction going into earnings. And if you look at the chart here, you know, you will see that this was that day. This was the day I got stopped at around 683. This is the day it closed in the lows, broke the 21 day. And since then, it became a trade. Trade has been trading at both long and short. Okay, this was the first time it actually, you know, Hit the 50 day. I don't know why the 50 day is not in there, but I'll put it in there just so you could see it because a lot of you guys are trading it with me. So, you know, I'll show you. First day it touched the 50 day, which is what I said it could happen after breaking the 21 day, a nice discount lower. You got a three day bounce. Then some guys shorted, and this time it closed below the 50 day, giving you a move to almost the 100 day. Then what happened? Three day bounce where guys could have got short and people could have made money long. And then what happened again? Move to the 100 day. What happened? Oh my goodness, another three day bounce before failing. And right now, this is, this is definitely a loose type of dangerous action. I remember two days ago, we had a nice long Goldman Sachs. I said the third quarter would be okay. Barron's had a nice write up, you know, and then boom, yesterday it opened week and then it tried to rally at the event and then people just sold it, which is what they try and do on Apple. So at this point, you know, with earnings on Thursday, you still have two sessions till then. So I would say watch this 609, 610 area. If they sell down Apple and it breaks this, before you do have the 200 day, you know, if it, we get another inside day here, you could trade versus that, okay? Um, this is what I'm thinking on a, on a bigger scale right. from Apple, okay? People are saying Red Dog is the historic highs in. You know, it, it would be a guess to say um, no or yes. I do think probability wise, every time you've had over a 10% move to the downside, you know, it does make new highs in the next quarter or so. So with that said, with the new products also, they're always a little bit shaky around the new products because it's such a high demand, it's hard to have supply for them. I actually think the, the price was high for the iPad mini, but I think that you know, it's gonna save some of their margins. And it's also not gonna cause a, a price war because they don't wanna start killing each other. As far as the iPhone 5, we know third quarter is not gonna be great. You still can't walk into an Apple store and say, can I have an iPhone 5, please? And they put it on your hand. You gotta like right. go on a list, you gotta go in a lottery, this, that, boom, bam. So, you know, there's going to be probably some soft numbers from iPhone 5, but a lot of people brought down those expectations. Right. So with that said, I think what's going to be important, you know, if you're watching this and I don't see you Thursday, is if when you listen to the re report, is A, third quarter could be soft. I think it's, it's, going to, it's going to be all about the fourth quarter. Typically, they come out and they put conservative guidance on the following quarter. That's what they do. They cannot do that this quarter. They got to come out and say, demand, you know, supply is going to be there. A lot of the demand that they couldn't fill is going to go in the fourth quarter, blah, blah, blah. They're very optimistic and raise the guidance for the fourth quarter. They do that and the historic highs aren't in. If they don't do that and they have it muted, it could still be choppy, but at some particular point, it resumes the uptrend and you know, investors could be uh, high-fiving themselves again. But for right now, traders have been using it as, as a two-way street, making money long and short. So know your levels and know your time frame. Some really great Apple points, and we'll be waiting <laughs> with much uh, anticipation for its report tomorrow, along with many other reports. It's a busy week. You know, keep, keep slogging through, keep uh, reading, keep uh, thinking about some longer-term investment perspectives in addition to your trading strategies. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for being with us. Thank you.